Good morning, everyone. Looking at your faces, I feel uh, like the good old days. That's good. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I can go on saying hallelujah and praise the Lord. But uh, I'll have to answer to Pastor Don when he returns that I preach something. <laughs> so I'll have to say some things before I finish because if, I don't want him to. But I could go on saying thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. That's all that's needed, you know. That's all that's needed. But before I start, I've got to say something. Uh, every time somebody comes up here, some particular person, I feel the Lord saying, you got something. And uh, Derek, I have to say, the Lord said there is only one thing worth being concerned about. You have discovered it. And I pray it will never be taken over from you. God bless you. That's discovered something really great. Joyce, you are entering into a new season. Your potential is great. In two years' time, you'll be harvesting. You new season to be bring lots of souls to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise you. And there's someone here. Don't want to mention names. Who is maintaining his or her output within the reasons of his mind? And the Lord is saying, stretch. Stretch out, stretch, because as you step out stretching, you will stretch my healing, you will stretch my love, you will stretch my finance. Don't limit it to your mind only. I, the Lord does not want me to mention names because there's a few, he said, associated with this prophecy. I am, I am who says I am. Says I, am. I, have I have what God says I have. I, have. I can do I what God says I can do. If you can, then why should I preach anymore? <laughs> if you can do all that and you believe all that, why should I go and I'd better go and sit down? And you'd better come up and preach. I've taken a scripture which is from Hebrews, book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 7. And uh, I feel that uh, this scripture is very important. In fact, I've had to change my stinking thinking because of this particular scripture. And uh, that's very important. He says, Today, today if you hear my voice, do not harden your hearts. Like your ancestors. And another few verses he says, like your ancestors, I swore on oath in my wrath, they shall never enter my rest. And that's what God is saying this morning. He's, he's God. He's not human, He's God. And that scripture is very important. Very important. In a later scripture he says, Therefore let us labor to enter 
into his rest. Therefore let us labor. I said that word labor and somebody said he does everything. No, it's there. I know we don't have to labor but still for all we have to strive to enter his rest. And that's by listening to his voice. The rest, no stress. Everybody runs to the pharmacy for tablets, you know, depression, anxiety, stress. That's our thinking. That's why I said I've got to change my stinking thinking. Somebody asked me as soon as I said it, are you saying that we shouldn't go to the doctors? No, I never said that. I never said that. Never said that. But there was, in the olden days, a king called Aza. Aza. And in his 39th year, his feet started giving trouble. And it came up over the, his body. And he went to physicians, did not consult the Lord. And what happened was, he did not consult the Lord. You got to consult the Lord. You got to hear his voice. That's what it's saying. And he died. It's not, I didn't say don't go to them. There's no scripture which says don't go to them. Thank God for doctors. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. But consult him. Hear his voice before you take a step. You know, Hebrews was written to Jewish Christians. It wasn't written to non-Christians. So when he says, hear my voice, he's not saying to non-Christians, he's saying to men of God. Even in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament it was written to the uh, to the Israelites who were traveling to the promised land and they said they, were, they had come out of Pharaoh's clutches, the devil's clutches. They had come out of, come over the Red Sea which is the blood of Jesus and he spoke to them. He said go forward and they got trapped and it was delayed. So, and the other fact I want to bring in is Moses. This is a very important factor. We all want to go to heaven. And we all want to get saved. And we all will go to heaven. And we'll all be saved. But the fact is, down here there is a rest which God is speaking of. And that's why Moses, he went to heaven, but God said, you will not enter his rest, because he struck that rock three times. When God said, just speak to it, he struck that rock three times, and he never entered that rest. He died, and he's in heaven. No problems. And we strive to go there. What about here? Where is the rest? Are we getting the rest from tablets? Or are we listening to the voice of God? There are a lot of... So there are a lot of people thinking... Thank God, we'll all be in heaven, the brothers and sisters. Thank you. So, concluding on that, I've got to say, the rest is for God's people. The rest is for the living. Don't put RIP on that dead person. He might have been in hospital resting for about three, six, eight, ten months. And you put RIP and he wants to go to heaven and enjoy himself. Poor fellow, 
he look at his tombstone and say, oh, they've expected me to rest. R.I.P. It's down here we've got to rest. The Old Testament rest was the promised land. New Testament rest is Christ. Galatians 3.16 says, the promises of God are for the seed of Abraham, Christ. So we got to strive to enter into him, his body. Christ important. New creatures in Christ. In him we live and move and have our being. There's no male, female in Christ. There's no condemnation in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. So the key to being in the rest is to hear his voice. So let us labor to hear his voice. It's very important. It's repeated in two chapters. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 7. Hebrews chapter 4, 3 verse 15. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 17. Let us hear Strive to hear his voice. Let us labor to hear his voice. Why does he use the word labor? You know, in the Old Testament, took the journey that took 11 days, 11 days, took them 40 years. Israelites caught in the devil's trap. And we call it wilderness and gone through the Red Sea, such as of Pharaoh, they were God's people, caught in disobedience. They had the Holy Spirit. They had the cloud by day and the fire by night. And we have it. Don't think that, don't bring, if you're in Christ, there's no condemnation. We have the Holy Spirit. But what he's saying is he's encouraging you to hear his voice. All the time. Let him lead you. The sons of God are led by the Spirit. It is relevant today. I, when I go to Sri Lanka, five years ago that when I meet them, they're saying, Oh, that person did this to me. That person did that to me. Ten years ago, maybe, in, you won't believe if I say it's 1970s, they said, that person did that to me. And when I go, if I go now, they say the same thing. They got trapped. Christians, lovely people, bless them, I love them, but still caught in that trap. Hearing his voice is important. Examine ourselves. Are we only petitioning him? It's good to petition. But are we only petitioning, giving him, oh, I want this, I want this to be done, I want this to be done, and we walk the way we are, we are, all the days of our lives. Let's examine ourselves. Are we concentrating? Even petition needs supplication. Even the courts need it. They have said, you need to write an affidavit. If you do petition, give reason, reasoning of why you are petitioning. And why aren't we supplicating it? And then we go on to, it says, effective prayer of a righteous man availer. Why? Because when we pray, sometimes we pray for, pray ineffective prayers. We petition things which are, you know, promises. They're already ours in Christ. But we say, we, you know, when I came from UK, or when I, everywhere I go, I carry a promise book. Because I have it. I don't have to petition you. Just separate it. So we've got to make it effective prayer of a righteous man. And righteous man being in him and hearing his voice. So we have 
So we've got to be careful. That's where the laboring comes. Not that we've got to go and do manual work, no. That we got to help the Lord, no. He's done everything for us. He's done everything for us. That's why I said I could go on saying thank you, praise you, hallelujah, the whole day. Prayer has to be two ways. It says in the Old Testament, Isaiah, wait on the Lord and uh, you, you renew your strength. Like that of the eagles. But remember, wait is not waiting. It's getting what you may call embedded into the Lord. Like a runner on a wall. Running over that wall. And the roots on that wall, on God, sucking the goodness of Him. That's important. That's waiting. It's a two-way. He's giving us. He's talking to us. He's leading us. And we are getting the benefit of it because He's God. It's very important we understand it's a two-way. Two-way. A conversation is two-way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you. Praise you, Lord. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. Praise you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our starting point in, is the finished work of Christ. We don't start right at the beginning. It's very important. Any deviations or sins, and then we be looking back at Egypt, and we go into the cross, cleansing ourselves. And what about the resurrection? For oh, His power is with us, and then something happens, and then we come back, and not going into Christ and hearing His voice, because what we are doing is like a like what you may call a treadmill. We're going, 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 not going any further. Because what happens is condemnation, guilt. We do something and then we think of it, oh, we've done this sin. And then we cleanse ourselves, the blood of Jesus, cleanse me, cleanse me, cleanse me. And then we go and the resurrection, the Lord has come to help us. Thank you, Jesus. Then it goes back again and it's a treadmill. We go every day. But we forget the ascension where he prepared a place for us called Christ to dwell in. And in him we live and move and have our being. Thank you, Lord. And when we are going in that treadmill, the devil is applauding all the way. You're doing well, my boy. The cross is there for you. But we never go to the finished work of Christ. And well, you know what Apostle Paul said? Get rid of that sin consciousness. They get rid of it. All the ordinances against you was crucified to the cross of Calvary. They were crucified. Now a starting point is there. You know, you have to understand Roman jurisprudence. The Roman jurisprudence, when a convict was in a cell, the scribe of the court came and put a notice, all the offenses he had committed. And when he had paid everything, there was, he came and cut it and said, it is finished. And that's what Jesus did for us. It is finished. In his blood, he said, it is finished. On my cell door, it's written, in his blood, it is finished. And I start from there. I start from there and start walking. No problem. No problem. I have no sin consciousness. Oh, oh, when you are, oh, we are only human. No, you are not only human. The resurrected power is living in you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. For a sinner like me, that's music in my ears. I can dance all day, sing all day. I have no problem 
accepting that gift of salvation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. I, you know, people long to hear his voice. Long to hear his voice. You know, a sheep longs to hear the shepherd's voice. You know, a chicken likes to hear the mother hen's voice. My sheep hear my voice and they know it, the Lord said. But lots, there are lots of voices today. You've got to hear his voice. And you know Hebrews, funnily enough, it goes to talk about the word. The word defines his voice. It's important. His voice is defined there. And you've got to seek the pure word, pure milk of the word. Thank you. In when I go to courts and represent somebody, they say at once, a voice made me do it. And immediately I turn back and look at him because he said something supernatural. He said something supernatural. He said a voice made him do it. A voice made him do it. I know that's that devil's voice made me do it. Thank you, Jesus. So you've got to discern the voice. You see, uh, prevalent in the internet today uh, is, you know, we think that everything, you know, internet is modern. There's nothing modern in God. You know, we've discovered it now. But some of the things are as old as sin. And we think that whatever comes from the internet is, oh no, it's modern. And people get into that trap. And they think, they start criticizing pastors. They criticize judging people. And that's all done by the Israelites, by the ancestors. You know, it's all done there. And they got trapped there. And we think it's something new. You know, there were other voices, even the shops. They know you. They got data of you. They present the colors, everything, to entice you. And we get addicted to it. So there are lots of voices today. And we listen to it. And we are here thinking that, you know, then there is dreams. God can speak to you in dreams. God can speak to you in visions. God spoke to me a few days ago in dreams. In a dream, I knew it was him. He took me to, uh, to my house and showed me in a room. And there were moths in it. I said, uh, immediately it struck. You know the Bible. There, there weren't bees. Or not if, and he showed me that because you know the Bible, you can walk and still not be correctly, might not be a good room. So he told me to clean it. And he gave me a shining clothes to wear. He spoke to me. That's really great. He could speak to you in dreams. Thank you, Jesus. And then there were visions. Sometimes, some time ago, somebody told me to pray and immediately, like lightning in the night, in the night I saw a snake. I should have told that snake to go. I didn't. Three, four weeks later, that guy was manifesting. And I thought, oh Lord, you told me. But fear of man stopped me from doing it. And then God can speak to you in an audible voice. You know Elijah. You know Elijah. The wind came and it tore the rocks and the mountains and he thought God was in it. Then the fire came, and Elijah saw that it could be in the fire. Then the, there was an earthquake, and Elijah thought that might be. But then again, that soft voice came, whispering, and it said, and he spoke, and God knew, and Elijah knew it was God. And he speaks to you this morning, softly speaking to you softly. He's saying, 
is leading you from behind. Thank you, Lord. Speaking to you, go this direction. Do this. And you've got to do it. Thank you, Jesus. Then there are commandments, which is the most important thing. We get mixed up with the law and grace. And we have debates about it. Should I do it? Or should I not do it? And it's very important that a commandment is different to the law. Commandment is the head telling you the body to walk. And if the body does not walk, it's spiritual paralysis. You can have physical paralysis, but you can have spiritual paralysis. The head telling you a commandment is that. So don't get involved in whether it's the law or grace. Just do it when the head says do it. Hear his voice. Like the rebellion. Don't wait without doing it. The bird says, today if you hear my voice, do not harden your heart as your forefathers did. They never entered my rest. Thank you, Jesus. How do you harden your heart? I want to this morning show you how you harden your heart. You believe in Jesus. We all believe in Jesus. We're very soft to him. We know the theology. But how do we harden your heart? It's very important we understand it. Jesus is the like a clock. That's that old Jew, that young, not old Jew, the Jew with a beard is like a face of a clock. But the mechanism is the word of God. Inside is the mechanism. And you've got to concentrate on that. You know Jesus is the word. And it's very important we understand that. So the word tells us how we could respond to him. It's the response that is necessary. We can believe and think it's correct, but the response is needed. Say for an example, uh, in Romans 8, 11 it says, Spirit that raises, raised God from the dead dwells in you and he'll make alive your mortal bodies. When is it when is it that we are not rebellious to that word? When is it that we respond to it? It is at the point our thinking changes and we know he's activating our body. Thank you, Lord. And we thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. Praise you, Lord. Another scripture says... He who, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has Zoe life. So he said it in the word. So at what point are we rebellious like our ancestors? At what point are we responding to the word? It is at the point. is when he says, he who eats my flesh believe that I have his flesh and I, I'm in his flesh and I'm representing him, ambassador. And at the point we know we have that Zoe life. Thank you, Jesus. It's useless theorizing, theologically, agreeing. It's responding to his word. And that response is necessary. We respond to him. We believe that we have that Zoe life. We have that godly life and we walk in it. We don't go from the cross to the resurrection and back again to the cross and the resurrection. But we come off it and we walk in that Zoe life, thanking Him and believing that we have it and walking in it and bringing people to Him 
and blessing them and giving them what they want. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. That point of change is necessary in our thinking. Thank you, Lord. There's a scripture. It says, Eva healed by his stripes. Eva healed. At what point do you have respond to it? At the point you know you are healed and you walk in it. He took our pains and our sicknesses. They are no longer mine. They are on the cross of Calvary. I don't have anything to do with it. I don't own it. I don't say I have it. I don't have those symptoms. I have his flesh and I have his blood and I walk in it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. That's why I said I could sing and praise and dance. I won't sing because he stops me from singing. It will spoil the song of all the sermon. But he's told me not to sing. Thank you. But I could sing. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. So, these, there were ten trials, which you got to remember looking back at Egypt, I go through it, unforgiveness, murmuring against the Lord, doubting the Lord is among us or not, trial of idols, complaining at situations, fine eating, gluttony, being critical or judgmental. That's not discerning, sir, lady. We cover it up saying, we are discerning that person. No, we are being critical and judgmental. <laughs> that trap is there. We got to be careful. And in Kadesh Bani, Bari, Baniya, the unbelief, Jesus underwent all these temptations. Thank you, Lord. He's done all that. I don't have to walk in this wilderness. He underwent all these things. And that's what he did. You know in a marathon, the baton is exchanged. You know, if somebody, if we are running, I've watched these marathons. The guy runs around and comes and gives the baton and you take the baton and run. And you take it and run. You don't go there, his starting point and you don't start running. That's why we've got to be careful. We don't have to go through the wilderness. Don't mix it up with valleys. I'm talking of the wilderness. He went through and gave me, and the baton starts from where he gave me that baton. In victory. I go in victory. He went through the wilderness. I do not have to go through that. Thank you, Lord. He died. And we died with him. He was raised. And we were raised with him. And he gave us to sit with him in heavenly places. Thank you. And it's from there I operate. From there I operate. You don't operate from here. From the right hand side, I operate. Thank you, Jesus. The word says we are born of, his, born of the Spirit. We are born of incorruptible seed. We have the same DNA as the Father. That's why we are His children. Thank you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God, and the Word was God, and the Word dwelt among us. Thank you. A coconut doesn't have apple fruits an apple tree doesn't have orange fruits God can't have any other fruit other than his fruit which is we have his DNA that's why we are his children but forget we are all equal as children but the sons are taught by a special tutor in the olden days olden culture in Jews they were taught by the word and they were heirs, they were made heirs because they were taught by the king to have the, to be the heir to the kingdom. 
That's different to children. The sons are different to children. They are led by the Spirit, by, the, by His voice. I have the same DNA as the father. They are looking for aliens now. You won't see a bigger alien than me in your lifetime. The scientists will be watching for aliens. I'm not of this world. When I lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. They shall speak it. That's not in the old script, but I believe in it. Shall recover. Shall speak with new tongues. Cast out demons. If you are human, could you cast out demons? Shall touch anything deadly. Apostle Paul had a serpent biting and he just continued praying. But you should be not to demonstrate, but you should be active in what he is doing. Go into all the world and disciple. If you are doing it, nothing can never touch you. Thank you. So, that's what James said. Your tongue is like a rudder of a ship. What your tongue says, your life will happen in your life. Because we are operating from, an, uh, from the right hand side of God and Exodus 15.5 says it shatters the enemy there, we are operating from there. It shatters the enemy. Enemy has no chance. Thank you Lord. Thank you Father. Praise you because he has no chance. Because we are operating from the right hand side of the Father where the power is. And the devil can't come onto that side because he'll be shattered. We are operating from there. And we can say to this mountain to move, it will. When you mention the name of Jesus from the right hand side of the Father, the cosmos, the devil, or anything doesn't know whether it's the Lord or me. Thank you. Thank you. God said, where are you to Adam? And this morning he's asking me, where are you? Where are you operating from? Where are you to hear my voice? You can become a walking miracle. Owe it to the cross of Calvary. My old account my old account was paid long ago. It was paid. When people say you have good qualities, I give a smile. They don't know who I was. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I used to I, it all to, I, I owe it all to Calvary. Thank you. In Sri Lanka, I used to sleep with a loaded gun. Loaded gun. Now I use the spiritual weapons at the drop of a hat. You can be talking to me or use the name of Jesus or the blood of Jesus. From one extreme, I've gone to the other extreme. Thank you. And that's great. That's what he has done for me. Today, I sleep in the rest of God. Thank you. My thinking is different. My responses are different. Christ altered my thinking. I believe in transformed temperaments. Transformed temperaments. Transformed by the Holy Spirit. I have many miracles working if I were to talk about them daily, even last week. Because I'm operating, not, not anything I have done, because I'm operating from up there. And sometimes people say, it's my intellect, forget it. If I operated, the thing is, if I did, 
if any mistakes I made, the great mistakes I made is by operating in my own men mentality. Had I listened to him, I would have been something different. But true Jesus died for me. I feel sad. I feel sorry. But whatever he is, but because he's done it, I don't want to lose anything from what he has done. It, I don't want it to be in vain. I grab hold of everything he's done because I don't want him to have died in vain. He took my pains. He took my sicknesses. On the suffering, he had took my infirmities. We are not qualified to suffer for them. He was qualified to suffer for them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. I walk with people and I walk with them. I do my best to correct my thinking. He has a response to him. Thank you, Lord. I told one lady, oh, I'm supposed, I'm disguised as a lawyer, a Christian disguised as a lawyer. A lady told me that she's got a bundle of papers with a legal problem lasting two years. She came to me. I met her yesterday. She told me, what am I to do? I am having this problem. And I told him, go back, go to your room, bedroom, put all the files on the gr ground and start dancing, praising Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you. Dancing. Dance, dance. Put all everything. Don't bring it up to your eyeball level. Dance on it with the victory dance. And she did it. And on the day of the trial, the other guy who was hassling her for two years, never turned up. It was victory. Victory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. So, sometimes we think that what Jesus said is putting us on a straight jacket. No, it wasn't. It was to protect our royalty. You know, Megan, if she had been told, you can't dress like this, you can't walk like this, you can't open car doors, you can't eat like this, you can't go on transport. As an actress, if she had been told, she would have said, no, I don't want it. But when she became a royal, it became protecting her royalty. It's like that for us. He said, Love one another. If it is yes, say nay. You are an ambassador. It's my government. Now when I meet you, I can't say, Oh, I'm having a bad day. I'm this, that is paining. No, I've got to say, My government. It rests on his shoulders. And I say, Thank you. I put my grief, God bless you, greet you. In the name of Jesus. That's how I greet people. I don't say, oh no, it's not me. I'm representing him, a government. And I dress properly. I walk properly as an ambassador for Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I represent him. No, don't, another thing, don't let one hand know what the other hand says. Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shake and together. These are things which you've got to do. So, finally, I was walking down the streets of Fremantle one day during my lunch hour. I was, working for a, I was working for a law firm. And in my lunch hour, I was walking down the streets of Fremantle. And I saw an advertisement. Unfortunately, it was from a, one of these funeral parlors. But it said, it said, life is not a dress rehearsal. It's not a dress rehearsal. This is the real thing. 
This is the real thing. And we got to get it right. And we get it right by hearing his voice. Listening to his voice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. So we got to get it right because this is not a dress rehearsal. So finally I've got to say there's a scripture which says put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body. The fullness of him that filleth all. Thank you. At what point, at what point do you become his body? Because the body hears his voice. At what point? I've got to give you three, three things to be his body, to have his rest. When you take him to be the head, the head is directing the body. That's number one. Your mind is not directing. Your denomination is not directing. But the word of God is directing. When you take him to be the head, then you are part of his body. Then, when all things are under your feet, you don't bring those things to eyeball level, they are under your feet. Things, sickness, things of this world, they are under your feet. You responding and you are not rebellious. Thirdly, when you function in the body, your heart is, you know, in a body the heart is building the lung, the lung is building the stomach, the stomach is building the different areas of the body. You function in the body right. You building each other. And you, those three things, please remember. You are listening to the head. You have everything under your feet. Thirdly, you are building each other up. That's what it is. You can close your eyes, your heads bowed, to the Father, not to me, to the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We listen to his voice. What he's saying to you this morning, as in the days of old, as your ancestors did, do not be rebellious and have that rest. Rest on earth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Just, just close your eyes. And if, not to me, but to the Father. Behind me is the mercy seat with the blood fresh as the day it was slain. And the ancient of days is watching you this morning. Not me. It's He speaking. Just put your hand up. I don't have to even watch. If He's just spoken to you this morning, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Just put your hand up for him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you for all you've done. We repent. We change our thinking. Thank you. Thinking. And we respond and walk in what you have done for us the rest of our days. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise you. Praise you, Jesus. Let's give the Lord a hand. Thank you, Father. Praise you. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord.